Welcome to the 13th annual USU Department of Physics November Demo Show. Circumstances being what they are, I decided to film a lot of popular physics demonstrations with our high-speed camera so that I could show you physics in slow motion. If you were here, you'd be watching these demos on the screen, so instead you could stay at home and watch them on your own screens. First demo tonight, the crushed barrel. That's a 55 gallon drum. It's got two liters of water in it. It's been boiling for 15 minutes. Time to shut off the valve. Turn off the heat now. You can see the high speed camera down on the lower left. Mariana's running that. And the thermal camera, Becca's running. Samuel and Hammond are moving the barrel. Oh, looks like we just connected our pressure sensor. We can hook it back up. The barrel's sitting in ice. That's help it cool off. Now it's time to add a little ice to the top. Let's see if we can do that. Yeah, there it goes. Now, spritz it with water. Oh, there it goes. Awesome. All right, let's see it in slow motion. Whoa, it had sunk down in the ice and when it jumped up, it threw the ice up in the air. Of course, tipping it dumps ice off the side too. Nice ice shower. Here's the thermal camera. You can see the barrel's 203 degrees Fahrenheit right now. Oh, Samuel's only 80 something degrees. Let's see, the barrel's still about 200. There goes the ice. It's dropping 90, 86, 85, 83, 78. Whoa, did you see that? It jumped back up to 188. Uh, when the barrel crushed, the volume decreased, the pressure and temperature went up, and it's cooled off quite a bit now. Here's our pressure data. You can see that the pressure is level across when the valves open, about 86 kilopascals. That's 12.5 pounds the square inch. That's atmospheric pressure. Uh, when we shut the valve, the pressure starts to go up. And then it goes to zero. That's when the pressure sensor got disconnected. We hooked it back up and you can see the pressure is dropping steeply because the barrel is now sitting on ice. The pressure drops even more steeply when we dump the ice on top. It gets all the way down to 48 kilopascals or about 7 pounds to the square inch. That's 5.5 pounds to the square inch lower than atmospheric pressure. Well, the barrel's got over 20,000 square inches of surface with 5.5 pounds per square inch. That's over 55 tons of force on the outside of that barrel. It's no wonder it collapsed. You see that spike in the pressure when the, when the barrel collapsed? The volume went down, the pressure went up, the temperature went up. Then as it continues to cool, the pressure keeps going down. We filmed our demonstrations this year with both a standard video camera and with our high-speed camera. It's called a high-speed camera because it takes a lot of pictures every second. The default frame rate for this camera is over a thousand pictures per second. If you're going to take that many pictures per second, you got a couple challenges. One of them is you need a lot of light. So I filmed many things outside and I've also used some special lighting. And you know, you can't use just any kind of light. Here's an incandescent light. Looks pretty good in normal video, but in slow motion, it sure flickers. Well, this is a fluorescent light. It looks good. Slow motion, look at it. Flickers a lot. How about an LED? Oh, it flickers a whole lot. So that alternating current we use. Here's a new kind of LED. It flickers, but not quite as much as the old ones. This kind of light here has, it looks white, but as you can see it's flickering. However, if you look at it in slow motion, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. It's really three colors, our eye puts it together and sees it as white. I think you've seen something like this before. The A on top of Old Main looks white. However, 
If you look at it in high speed, you can see that it's changing colors. Now you can't see the green real good here, but I promise you red, green, and blue makes white, and that's what the A looks like. Well, here's a simple demonstration for you. It's called a ring and chain. I have here a short chain and a ring. I take the ring and bring it up from the bottom of the chain and drop it. Expect gravity will accelerate it down. Maybe there'll be a little friction from the chain to slow it down, but that's about all. Well, let's try it. Is that what you were expecting? Maybe we better check that out in slow motion. Well, they say the hand is quicker than the eye. Did you see me give that ring a spin? That's how we got the chain tied around it. Things sure do look different in slow motion. Let's try another demonstration that happens fast. This is called the falling flask. This is my daughter Mariana and my granddaughter Adeline. Now Adeline just turned one in October, so this is her first demonstration. We've got a little lightweight ball connected to a heavy flask. The flask has 14 times the mass of the ball. What happens if they let go of the ball? Whoa, is that what you expected? That ball connected to the string wrapped right around the bar, kept the flask from hitting the ground. Let's see that in slow motion. Flask is falling. Ball's swinging. You notice as the string gets shorter, the ball starts going faster. That's conservation of angular momentum. Hey, when it gets straight above, the flask has stopped moving. It's got one and a half wraps around the bar at that point, and it's got enough friction to stop the flask from going down. Well, let's try a couple different kinds of tops next. Let's see what they look like in slow motion. This is a tippy top. I think you've seen that before. Stands right up on its end. It's pretty cool. In slow motion, you can see that it's slowly, slowly tipping down. The stem is. The center of mass, its position, and friction makes this top slowly tip till the stem gets lower and lower. Once it makes contact, pops right up on its end. There it goes. This is a rattleback or a celt. It's probably not really a top, but it's kind of cool how you spin it one direction, it stops and starts rotating the other direction. In slow motion, you can see it's spinning pretty good at first, but it starts tipping first on its narrow axis, and then more and more towards its long axis. The rotational motion has been converted into tipping motion, rocking. Now it's starting to go the other direction. It has to do again with the center of mass. It's picking up speed and you can see that it's tipping less now. This top's just two wooden spheres. They look kind of like eyes. Why, oh, that's going fast. Pretty hard to see what's going on there, but it's cool. Let's see it in slow motion. The cool thing is that pretty quick, one end is sitting on the glass and spinning and rolling, the other end's up in the air, it doesn't touch at all. Well, what you call a battery a top? Looks like a top, it spins pretty good. It's a blur. So let's try it out in slow motion. Well, look at that. One end sitting on the glass, spinning and rolling. There's a word for that, it's called spooling. Spins and rolls, spools around and around. Going to finish this section off with the Euler's disc. It's a big, heavy disc. You give that thing just a little spin, and sometimes it'll go for two minutes or more. When it starts off, the center of mass is higher. It's got more gravitational potential energy. As it tips down, it converts that gravitational energy into kinetic energy and starts spinning a little faster. I think it's pretty cool to see how the sunlight is focused by that concave mirror on the wall and to see the shadow of the disk. Faster and faster it goes. Oh, now it stopped. In slow motion, you can see that this is spinning and rolling, spooling again. I like the disco ball effect as the sunlight shines off of that disc.
Now here we are close to the end. Pay attention to the mirror. Can you see that that mirror is moving? As we get closer to the end, it moves a little more and a little more. And when it does, it's taking energy out of the disc. Look at it, how it stopped. Well, that's it for this part of the November Demo Show. But if you want to see more, there's more videos.